Hi everybody, my name is uh, Kurt and I want to present you my new synthesizer, analog synthesizer which was completely designed and uh, constructed by myself. Yeah, I built my first synthesizer in the mid 70s and then later I was res responsible at the uh, Electro magazine for constructing and developing the uh, synthesizer made by Curtis. Uh, integrated circuits. As these <coughs> Curtis chips are no longer available since a long time, I decided to try to build a new synthesizer without these Curtis chips and I only used easy available integrated circuits like uh, operational amps of the type uh, um, OP a uh, OP07 uh, and uh, the 3140 CMOS operational amp and also I used uh, OTARs in the VCA and VCF of the type CA3080 and in addition some, uh, some CMOS integrated circuits in the envelope generator <coughs> like the 4093 or the 4081. That's all about uh, the chips I used and now let's have a look at the operation. Now let's first have a look at the keyboard. The keyboard is external, it's an external unit and this keyboard I bought from the German distributor Döpfer Electronic and the wooden housing was built by myself. The keyboard is producing an analog control voltage for the VCO pitches it's um, one volt per octave, uh, default value, and uh, this uh, linear voltage is converted into an exponential voltage for the VCOs <coughs> by a special exponential converter I uh, de developed. And it's, the converting is done by two normal transistors of the type PC. 547C. The tuning is extremely linear. You can see it <coughs> when you play some octaves. And the whole unit consists of two voltage controlled oscillators. The first one can be detuned against the second one to make different intervals. For instance, for, in, uh, for example, the fifth, the quint, and uh, so we can play in parallel intervals. And with this common tuning button, I can detune two VCOs together to adapt the pitch to another instrument, for example. So I can do a fine tuning. And of course, I can change the octaves by an octave switch. And this for the other VCO also. And so when I tune the two VCOs together, and let's say I take a, take a square wave voltage, a square wave signal, And with this button I can change the waveform. <coughs> I have a square wave now. I can change the pulse width of the square wave. Here I have a ramp. Typical ramp singer sound, sorters sound. Here I have a sign. And here I have a triangle sound with <clears throat> its typical sound of a little more harmonics. And of course I have an LFO where I can modulate 
the frequency of the VCOs. Let's take a ramp signal again. Here I can change the modulation intensity and I have now a, a ramp function to modulate the VCO and here I can change the, the modulation frequency. And I can switch over to a other ramp, mounting fast and going down slowly. And I have also a triangle function. Now this was the unit which creates the waveforms. Now we talk about the modifying units. They are here. You have here uh, ADSR generator for the filter and another one for the VCA, the voltage controlled amplifier. Now let's first have a look at the voltage controlled filter. It's a 24 dB voltage controlled filter built by uh, OTAS. <coughs> Transconductance amplifiers, and uh, here I can change the cutoff frequency manually, and here I can change the emphasis of the filter. That's the maximum emphasis. Here's the minimum emphasis, and here we have just to have it at the minimum the amount of contour of the ADSR function. If we go down to a low cutoff and we make a high uh, um, amount setting, then when we press a key, we can influence the sound with the attack decay. Sustain release. By the way, well, here the it's getting shorter, it's getting longer. And we can we can do different sound effects and <coughs> it's better listening than explaining. And uh, so when we play, you hear the typical synthesizer sound. And of course you can do the same with the, the VCA. If I cut here the VCA release function, the tone will disappear after releasing the key. That's all a standard, all default, and it's uh, similar to the to the old mini MOOC a little, not completely, but uh, in principle. And here you have uh, the main tuning, of course. It's done by a double potentiometer to reduce the noise a little bit. And of course, important too, we have the Glissando or the portamento effect. The tone is gliding. still mounting even if you release the key earlier. It doesn't stop in the middle if you release it too early. 
Well, and with all these combinations, you can you have a lot of different sounds you can play. And I will give you an example in the next section. For typical Emerson, Lake and Palmer sound from Lucky Man. It's two parallel independent running uh, VCOs with both 50% square wave, that's all. From the Amazon Lake and Palmer um, LP, pictures of an exhibition, maybe one of you knows it. Solo from uh, the I Can Tina Turner song uh, Not Push City Limits. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah.